Hello. This episode, we get into not a sexy topic, not a fun topic, but a very important one. Backing up all of your assets in a safe and cost-effective way. Um, <clears throat> we all have a collection of a gazillion hard drives, USB, some of us on the older side, even SCSI drives, <clears throat> whatever, you name it. You've got a collection of drives of for some, very important assets that you've created over the years, and some of those you've monetized, you've gotten um, you know, paid for those, you don't wanna lose them. Uh, there's a potential of getting paid from them again in the future, you wanna hold on to that, you gotta protect it. Drives are not uh, bulletproof. If your drives are three to five years or older, you should really think about getting new drives. Now think about the drives that you have on your shelf in your studio. You've probably got a bunch of them that are way older than that. Here's a method that you can use to kind of bring you current, protect yourself, and back up using the cloud as well for a very cost-effective way, which is not always the case, right? Nowadays, you can get into some cloud backup that's safe and secure and, and cheap too. So um, let's do it. I want to iterate, this is one way to do this. This is not the only way. And I'm anxious to hear how other people are doing their backups too. But this is a, a method that I've been implementing for a few people recently that seems to work pretty well. So what we did is we went out and bought two identical drives. And <clears throat> I would recommend that you get a Thunderbolt drive or at least USB 3.0 so that these drives are capable. They're, they're, they have the capacity to be your work drives. They don't have to be identical, but they should be the same size. It's easy just to get two identical drives of the same model, same make, and call it good. It might be an, a 10 terabyte drive. It might be 12. It might be 20. You need to figure out how much drive space you might have accumulated in all of the drives that you've collected over the years. Now, it could be a lot, so you might need to do more than two drives. But here's here's the, the kind of the concept here. So one of these two identical drives I call the work drive, and this is where I make a copy of every drive that you can round up in your studio, US, old USB, Firewire drives, whatever. Copy them all off. I put them in a folder called archived, archived drives. And I keep the same drive, I create a folder with the same drive name so that I can easily go back in there and identify where um, these assets may be. So it's a little bit time consuming to do this out of the gate. You want to copy all of your old drives onto this drive so that you have access to that material if you need it. Right now in that same drive outside of the archive drives folder, I've got Pro Tool sessions or projects or work area. How you choose to name these folders are up to you. But what I would try to avoid is just having a whole smattering of projects and sessions at the root level. Cr try to use a little bit of a folder structure. So, for example, in projects, you have, and I'm just using these random names, it could be an album title, it could be a band that you're working with, it could be um, however you want to name it so that when you come back in here looking at these folders six months or a year or five years from now, you've got an idea of what is in that folder without having to open it up and, and fish out the, the contents, right? <clears throat> you can put a date in the name, you can put uh, you know long descriptions or short descriptions, whatever. Um, try to be consistent with naming so that so that it makes sense, right? So the naming in here is is up to you. Um, but anyway, this is where the work drive, this is where I do all of my work. I record to this drive, I mix off this drive. I've got all my old assets in there. If I need to pull something and, and you know bring it up and, and work on it again or deliver it or whatever the case may be, I have immediate access to all of that. All of those old drives that I copied on here, I once I copy them on, I remove them, put them on a shelf, right? Put them away. And I put a piece of tape on those drives with the name of the drive on the tape and the date in which that drive was backed up to my work drive. So that if I pick up this drive on my shelf, I can tell by looking at it quickly, yes, this has been backed up or there's no tape on it. I've come across another drive that I need to add to this work drive. I, I know how that I need to do that, right? <clears throat> okay, so that's my work drive. All my work is done there. The second of the two identical drives is simply a backup. It's gonna be a mirror image 
of my work drive, right? I don't work on it, I don't do anything, it's just purely a copy of it locally. In the event that my work drive dies or craps out, I still have immediately on my system a whole backup of that. <clears throat> and I use an application called Chronosync to do that. Now, there's a bunch of different applications that will do this. This will do an incremental backup, which means the first time I do a backup from, from my work drive to my, uh, my backup drive, it's going to take a long time because it's going to back up all that material. It might take a couple of days. Who knows? It depends on how much storage you have. But any backups that I do from that point on are going to be very quick because it's only going to back up things that have been added or updated since the last backup. And I can schedule these backups to happen every night. I can ha have them, you know, once a week. I would say every night, do it late after you're done, or you can manually go in and fire off these backups if you choose. It's better to do it automatically so that you don't forget. And um, so this way you've got your work drive, you've got a, a mirror of that work drive uh, in your backup drive. Don't use the backup drive to work on it. It's simply there as a backup. I don't use Time Machine. I'm not a fan of Time Machine. We'll get into that another time. Time Machine can be very um, invasive to your system. It will, it's kind of taxing. This uh, Chronosync will only back up when you tell it to or when you schedule it to. So it's not going to you know, Im impact or impede your, your, your Pro Tools system. All right, so the next step is... That's great. I've got my work drive. I got my mirror image of that. Now I want to make a, a copy of those drives up into the cloud. And you're going, great. That's going to cost me an arm and a leg, right? No, it's actually not. This is a service I've been using for the last few years. It's called Backblaze, right? And it's very reasonably priced. Here's the pricing. It's $70, $7 a month, or $70 a year, or $130 for two years. Now, these prices are as of July 9th, 2023. So if you're seeing this video later, these prices may have changed. But this is per computer, right? So I have um, this service I've purchased for my studio Mac, and I also have purchased it for my laptop as well. The cool thing about this is it will make a backup of your uh whatever you choose actually but i have it back up my documents folder my desktop i don't have it back up the applications folder i will install that stuff new if my hard drive dies you can have that backed up as well but more importantly this will make a backup of my work drive and my uh, backup drive so i've got a copy of both of those drives in my Backblaze account up in the cloud. And the $70 per year includes those two drives that are attached to your system. It's very cost effective and it's easy to, to get that back, right? So in the event, you know, your studio burns down or whatever, you still have access to the Backblaze. You can log into your Backblaze account and download that material or you can have them send you a new drive with a copy of all of your material on it. So for $70 a year, it's a, it's a really good uh, way. There are other services that are available for this, so it doesn't have to be Backblaze. The point is, is that you're making a copy of your material off-site. It's not living in your studio, it's at a completely different location. Here's a diagram of a basic diagram of what it would look like. I used an old Mac Pro because I created this for someone who has a Mac Pro. But substitute your Mac or your PC in for that uh, Mac Pro trash can there. And this just gives you a rough idea of what's going on here. So there's my work drive, my backup drive, which is a mirror image of my work drive. And both the work drive and the backup drive are backed up to Backblaze for $70 a year. I forgot to mention Chronosync software that I use to do the mirror imaging from the work drive to the backup drive is $50. Um, and again, there's other applications that will do that for you as well. It doesn't have to be Chronosync, but there may be a fee for any of the apps that you might use to do that. But it's, it's very small and it's a one-time thing typically. I hope this helps. 
and um, would be anxious to hear how other people are doing effective backups of their assets, both on site in their studio and in the cloud. Thanks. Take care.